So, having done this uh, dry sand slope stability analysis, uh, now we will move on to uh, submerged slopes. And when we talk about the submerged slopes, there has to be a seepage line. So, we want to understand because of seepage conditions how the stability of the slope is going to get changed, all right. Say this is the slope and this is has a uh, seepage line. Now, this seepage line is inclined at an angle of i alpha normally take alpha sorry i we normally take for uh, you know the inclination of the slope. So, this is alpha this is how the seepage line is seepage line means flow line is given and under these circumstances I want to compute the factor of safety of the slope. Yes, the direction of the seepage is from top to bottom. There could be a situation where seepage is from bottom to top also, reverse direction. Bottom to top we will discuss, but for a quick answer, we, we have done this in seepage analysis. If you remember, the seepage force acting per unit volume of a, of a control volume or a soil mass. Now, in this case, what we have to do is uh, take the slice, this is the slice which I have considered. This surface is parallel to the slope, infinite slope. Now, tell me one thing, if I ask you to find out pore or pressure at this point, can you obtain? What else is required? The flow line is known perpendicular to this is equipotential line, yes. So, equipotential line is going to be like this. So, what is the relationship between these two? 90 degree. Equipotential line is cutting the flow line. I want to find out pore water pressure at this point. So, what I should be doing? Old concepts which we discussed. At this point, if I insert a piezometer, what is going to happen? This is the height of the cut somewhere. That means, actually the way I have drawn is not correct because uh, you have to be careful when you are doing this. So, uh, wherever the equipotential line would cut the surface, okay. Now, this is the point where if I put the piezometer, it will go up to this point. So, this is the piezometric tube and this is the height of the water column, why it is so? At this point, the equipotential line cuts the atmosphere. So, the height of pore pressure or the height of water which is going to be in the piezometric tube will be HW is okay.
you go back to the basics, you will realize that there is a, there is a seepage line and the seepage line is perpendicular to the equipotential line, correct. So, wherever these two cut and become atmospheric, the equipotential line cutting the atmospheric surface, that is the value of total piezometric head. So, the main objective is to find out pore pressure HW, why? There is a relationship between pore pressure gamma W into HW, rest is simple geometry, rest is simple geometry. This angle is alpha, what is this angle? 90 plus i, is this fine? And what about this angle? This thing is 90 degree, this whole thing, this is alpha minus i. So, suppose this is x, can I use the triangle law? In triangle ABC, what is the value of now? Can we compute x? This is known, this is d, d is the depth of slip surface. So, I can say x upon sin of 90 plus i equal to, yes, a b that is d over sin 90 minus alpha. What is this angle? 90 plus i plus alpha minus i, so this becomes 90 plus alpha and 180 minus, so 90 minus alpha, correct. So, what we have obtained is x equal to d sin 90 plus i cos i over cos alpha. Why we have obtained x? Because we want to obtain hw. It is a good question. Now, what is the relationship between Hw and x? So, use triangle C, B, D, all right. What is the value of Hw? Hw equal to x into sine of this angle. This is cos of alpha minus i because this will become 90 minus alpha minus i. So, this will be cos of alpha minus i. Please check it. So, x is equal to d cos i over cos alpha into cos alpha minus i. This is the relationship which we have got for HW. HW depends upon what incidentally? Analyze this expression, height of water or the pore of pressure at the point B is a function of depth of the point, okay. Alpha is the seepage line. perpendicular is not possible. Why? Because if alpha is equal to 90 degree, what is going to happen? So, the analytical solution which we are doing right now is not valid for alpha equal to 90 degree. Why? 
What is the reason? No, forget about this angle angle. What is the reason? The reason is, any guess? If alpha is 90 degree, equipotential line is not going to cut the atmospheric line. That means point C will not exist and if point C does not exist, we cannot get the HW. That means I have to do some other method. So, this is the solution which is not valid for alpha equal to 90 degree. You got this point. That means HW tends to infinity. Okay. So, we have obtained HW. Now, what else can be done with HW? So, in most of these analysis where we are doing slope stability, you know, what we want to do is we want to find out the effective shear strength or total shear strength at the slip surface. So, one more thing which you should realize here is that this shear force is the stabilizing shear strength. The weight which is acting is destabilizing. So, the W sin of I term is destabilizing and W cos of I is trying to negotiate with the pressure at the acting at the base, normal stress. Is this fine? So, suppose if I know U and uh, I if I know HW, can I compute the value of pore pressure? U at base, what will be equal to? This equal to? This is in the form of the pressure, we are dealing with the forces. So, this has to be multiplied by the area, correct. So, this will be equal to gamma W H W multiplied by, if this is B, what is the length of the inclined length of the base? This happens to be B into sec I. The convention is that we always take lateral directions horizontal or the width of the slice as horizontal and whatever the depths are, we take them in the vertical direction for the same sake of uh, simplicity. So, now this thing is getting multiplied by, uh, you know, which term? This is going to get multiplied by uh, B sec I. So, this is the value of the UB. Can I write down the factor of safety term now? What will be the factor of safety relationship? The shear strength offered by the material. So, this will C equal to 0. So, this is going to be n prime tan phi prime tau, yes. So, see this is equal to 0 for dry conditions, dry sorry, uh, dry sands. Oh, I am sorry, it is not dry sand. This is submerged condition, but sandy slopes. So, C is equal to 0. We have to compute n prime. I am just coming to that. Once you have got UB value, you can compute the n prime value. And what is the stabilizing force? This is the stabilizing force, shear strength. And what is the destabilizing force? The W component, which is acting parallel to the slope. So, what is that? Now, compute the value of n prime. So, what is the value of n prime?
from here we can take the vertical component vertical to this base. So, this is w cos i w sin i. So, w is gamma b d cos i minus n prime is what we are computing. So, pore of pressure in pore of pressure term you know what is appearing? What we have written is that u b equal to the base pore of pressure is gamma w h w b sec i. H w is this. So, this is a big expression. So, what you have to do here? This will be equal to gamma w into d cos i over cos alpha into cos alpha minus i gamma w h w. So, this is h w portion multiplied by b sec i. Is this okay? n prime tan phi prime has to come in the numerator. So, this can be written as gamma b d cos i minus gamma w into d into b cos alpha minus i over cos alpha. Is this okay? I can write this as gamma b d cos i minus this will become gamma w by gamma. into cos alpha minus i over cos alpha. So, what is the factor of safety term? The factor of safety term would be if I define this as now I will substitute straight away I think you can realize this. So, the factor of safety term will be equal to this term multiplied by tan phi prime. And what is coming in the denominator? Gamma b d into sin i. So, this becomes the factor of safety term. I can further simplify this as take out cos i term that is intentional. So, when you take out cos i term this will become 1 minus gamma w over gamma cos alpha minus i over cos alpha into cos i multiplied by tan phi prime over tan i. Are you happy with this? What is the similarity between this situation and what we have derived? That means this term is a sort of a penalty or a factor which has been imposed on this term. Very simple to realize the situation. In case of dry sandy slopes, the factor of safety was tan phi over tan i. Submerged situation, clear? What is going to happen? This becomes your effective stresses. We have filtered out the effect of water by using this concept, effective stresses, normal stresses, substituting over here. 
and I get this relationship. What can be done further? Imagine what is this term? In simplified form, go back to your 10 plus 2 trigonometry. Can I convert it into 10 components? 10 of 10 of alpha, 10 of i. Try doing that. Yes, very nice. So this becomes 10 alpha plus 10 i term, 1 plus. So that means you are right. So this is equal to 1 minus gamma w over gamma 1 plus 10 alpha into 10 i. Yes. And of course, the very well known factor that is 10 phi prime over 10 i. So, simple analysis of the logic is that whatever is happening in terms of submergence and seepage is to reduce the factor of safety, it is understood. The summer slopes are going to be less stable as compared to the dry slopes. So the factor of safety is going to reduce. I equal to 0 and 10 alpha, alpha equal to 0, what is going to happen? Horizontal ground and seepage line is parallel to the surface uh, and we are not interested in such type of a situation because this is a very critical situation which we are trying to solve. Usually uh, gamma w upon gamma is taken as 1 by 2. Another interesting situation could be when alpha is equal to i. So what is going to happen? I is the inclination of the slope also. So alpha is in such a manner that this is just at an angle which is same as the angle of the slope, parallel to the slope. Yes. So in that case what is going to happen is uh, this will become what? Alpha vanishes then this becomes 10 square i. So here I can write this as factor of safety will be equal to 1 minus gamma w over gamma and what is 1 plus 10 square i? into 10 phi prime over 10 i. What is the value of this bracket term? This is normally written as 1 minus gamma w over gamma into 1 upon cos square i. Tan phi prime over tan i. In this case, if your alpha term is 0, what is going to happen? Parallel flow condition. So, alpha equal to 0 equal to i, then, then what is going to happen? If you put alpha equal to 0, 
uh, this becomes a situation where the direction of the flow is parallel to the slope, all right. So, what is going to happen in this case? This will become i is not becoming 0 like that, but because alpha is equal to i, so this term will disappear. This will become 1 minus gamma w over gamma multiplied by tan phi prime over tan i. And usually we take gamma w over gamma as half. So, this is equal to 1 by 2 tan phi prime over tan i. What has happened to the factor of safety? It has reduced by half under submergence. For the critical condition, can I write that i will be equal to phi prime by 2 approximately. Yes. This will remind you of your 10 plus 2 geometry and the trigonometry which you used to do to solve these problems. The concepts are simple. Uh, just to wrap up the things, what we have done is we have taken a slice, we have computed the weight, weight is known find out the normal stress which is acting on the surface, where it is acting. Uh, this is n prime and then we wanted to find out what is the pore water pressure, use the concept, get the HW, convert it into the pores acting on the base, n is known, n minus pore water pressure is going to give you n prime. This is the shear strength of the material which is stabilizing force divided by the destabilizing forces or the stresses and then this is simple analysis. One of the expressions could be here I can get rid of tan alpha and I can make it 1 plus tan square i also. Which is more advantageous for us because i is the inclination of the slope with respect to horizontal. So, factor of safety is 1 minus gamma w over gamma 1 plus tan square i multiplied by tan phi prime over tan i.